Welcome to the Orthodontics and Summary Podcast, where Farouk brings you the key points and understanding of orthodontic webinars, conferences, and papers in a concise podcast with your host, Farouk Ahmed. Welcome to another episode. Today, we're looking at the lecture entitled Vertical Changes in Orthodontics and Their Importance. This is a lecture by Adith Renugopal. This was a really interesting lecture. We went through a series of nine clinical cases. And what Adith did very adeptly was to describe clinical tips and pearls about how to use biomechanics, specifically with the vertical component in mind. We'll be covering the first half of the lecture in this podcast. So the first case was a class one biomaxillary protrusive case where the extraction of all fours were required. And Adith mentioned the risk of retracting in these cases is that we can create a bowing effect in, through our biomechanics. So to recap, that's where we get ex- bending of the arch form or the arch wire vertically. So we result in getting extrusion of the anterior teeth and also extrusion of the posterior teeth and the sliding mechanics is prevented. Adith spoke about a method to resolve this. It was through using temporary anchorage devices. So you placed a mini screw in between the upper first molar and the upper second premolar, between the upper five and six on the buckle aspect. He then had direct retraction from the labial segment to the mini screw. But also to manage the vertical component, he had a ligature, which I thought was quite ingenious and simple, simply going from the mini screw to the arch wire between the five and six, just vertically. And this prevents the extrusion process of the upper posterior teeth, stopping that bowing effect from occurring, and therefore sliding mechanics is uninhibited. The next case was a class one crowding case, high angle, requiring extraction of all fours. What Adith mentioned here was the concept of the low TPA. Well, what is that? That's a conventional TPA, which is constructed five millimeters of clearance from the actual palate. Well, why and how does this work? The concept behind it, Adith explained, is the tongue pressure on the TPA. This results in an intrusive force to the molars. He describes swallowing taking place 800 times a day at 500 grams per time. Now, this is an intermittent force. It's not enough to intrude the molars, but it's enough to provide vertical anchorage for high angle cases. The third case looked at the curve of speed. So Adith painted a very clear picture of high angle and low angle cases for managing the curve of speed. In high angle cases, the musculature is weak. As we level the curve of speed, we're likely to get posterior eruption to correct the curve of speed. In low angle cases, we have really strong musculature. Consequently, leveling the curve of speed results in either anterior intrusion or proclination. Now he mentioned we need to tailor the management of the curve of speed to the case. So for the high angle case, we need to carry out intrusion of the incisors. And for low angle case, we need to carry out extrusion of the posterior teeth. So he described his method of doing this, and it was using either a one-piece intrusion or a three-piece intrusion arch. I'll explain that. So for the one piece intrusion, it's simply a sectional piece of arch wire between the upper two to two. He has a temporary anchorage device placed in the upper one one region. And the one piece intrusion simply involves having some power chain going from the temporary anchorage device through to the arch wire. This allows anterior intrusion to occur. Now, this is clearly clinically experienced with some real depth and mentioned that actually this anterior mini screw can cause ulceration. The three-piece intrusion arch is interesting. So it's the same as the one piece in the anterior segment, sectional wire between the upper two to two. This time, however, we have a posterior arch wire running from the canine to the first molar. Now, there's another temporary anchor device between the upper five and six. And the way that this then works is that the anterior segment is being intruded with the anterior one-to-one tad, but also being retracted by the temporary anchor device between the upper five and six, and that distal hook we described. There's also vertical anchorage with that posterior temporary anchor device being ligated to the upper second premolar. This way we're allowing the anterior segment to be retracted and intruded and preventing any posterior extrusion and consequence to the biomechanics. 
Now, Adith gave a clinical tip here, which I thought was really valuable. The leaving in of the TADs in the retention period. So he leaves the anterior TAD in. He places a lingual button in the vacuum-formed retainer, so on the lingual side or palatal side of the upper incisors. And from this lingual attachment in the retainer, the patient places the elastic of two ounces over the occlusal surface to that anterior labial TAD. This allows an intrusive force to take place on those anterior teeth. That's it for this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Please stay tuned to next week's episode, which will be part two of Hadith's lecture. As always, please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.